Hi, I'm Glenda, and I'm here today to talk about successful music practice at home. The first step is to recognize the importance of establishing the practice habit. Many people want to try out music lessons just to see if it's their thing or if they, they like it or if they're good at it. Um, and they come to lessons excited at first because it's a new adventure, but then uh, when things get a little bit challenging, if they haven't established a practice habit at home, they tend to get discouraged and quit thinking that music is just not for them or they're just, it's not their gift. But um, we here at Harmony Road Studios believe that every person can be successful if they have a good instructor, a quality instrument to practice on, and they're doing their job of practicing at home on a consistent basis. All right, the second step is to set a specific practice schedule. Choose the days that you're going to practice. Uh, choose the exact time. Preferably, it would be the same time each day. It's easier to remember and uh, easier to establish a habit that way. And then your, your instrument should be set up in a place that's free from distractions like the TV or younger siblings. Um, but having a specific practice schedule is important. And then the third step is to be consistent in maintaining your schedule. Music practice is a discipline and success will come with being consistent. Now, we don't always feel like practicing on a certain day, and other days we feel excited about it. Doesn't matter. We're going to practice anyway, regardless of how we feel. You can expect your schedule to be challenged. Uh, Work-related issues or uh, illness or family things come up, and um, all of those are important. Uh, but your practice time needs to be maintained uh, even if you get thrown off for a day or two. Don't waste time feeling guilty about it. Just pick back up where you left off and go back to practicing on your, on your set days and times. And just a quick word to parents who uh, have children that are taking lessons. Uh, we can't expect young children to remember on their own uh, when or how, even why they should be practicing. Uh, I would encourage you as, uh, as a parent myself to not only remind your child, uh, it, but not to make it a matter of discussion. This is when we're practicing and here, we're going to do it together. Sit down with your child and, and uh, help coach them through their practice session. Whether you feel that you're a, a musical person or not, doesn't matter. You're still a grown up and you can help encourage them to uh, be consistent with their practicing. Now, let's say you have your, a worst case scenario. This is point number four. You're going to attend your music lesson no matter what. I have students calling all the time, not all the time, sometimes, and saying, I, I didn't practice, so should I come to my lesson? And my answer is always yes. Even if it's the worst case scenario where you didn't practice and you forgot your books, show up anyway. Um, if you have a quality instructor, that person is going to know what to do. And uh, you can learn something, uh, and hopefully next week you'll remember your books and you'll have practiced also. Coming to your lesson will remind you of the elements of your music uh, that you need to learn, that you, maybe you heard it before, but it doesn't hurt to hear it again. All right, now my, the fifth and final point uh, in successfully practicing your music at home is that you want to use good practice strategies. Don't practice randomly, hoping that you're going to learn your songs. You want to practice with some specific things in mind. Like when you're first learning a piece, you want to practice hands separately. One right hand first, then left hand. Also, practice in small sections. One line at a time, one phrase at a time, or one section at a time. If you try to play your music all the way through every time, um, it'll take you longer to learn it. Now, how many times should you practice while you're practicing a particular song? There's no exact answer for that. You practice once or... Once is not really practicing, by the way. But three or four or five, ten times? However t many times it takes to learn the song is the answer. Um, now, finally... I said that before, didn't I?
sorry, I have three more little tiny points. Once you can play a piece all the way through, that, that's the time to use the metronome. So put, find the speed that you can currently play your song at, set your metronome at that speed, and play all the way through. That will expose any spots that you may not quite know yet. Once you fix those, then begin turning your metronome dial up one or two notches at a time when you practice, and you'll be able to increase the speed of your song over a week or two in time. Use a CD or a YouTube recording uh, to help you to polish your piece. Uh, always listening to someone else do it points out things that give us some clear direction. And then uh, I, I have an idea that I haven't heard um, a lot of other people talking about, but I think it's a great idea, and that is look for someone to play your song for. In other words, someone that you can be accountable to. Uh, that's helpful with your practicing as well. Uh, do you have someone that's reminding you, even as an adult uh, or a, as a teen, to practice? Have them ask you regularly, Are you, did you practice today? And then once you learn your pieces, Use that same person, whether they're a friend or family member, uh, to play your piece for and then get feedback from them. It motivates you to move along a little more quickly than if you're the only one that you're playing your music for. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our tips for successful practicing at home and, and uh, we wish you well. I'm Glenda.